Welcome to the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nedling. You are about to discover impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you, so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Be sure you visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now tune in, get ready, and enjoy the journey of emerging as a leader of exception in the 21st century. Welcome everyone to the Find Your Leadership Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Vicki Nethling, coming to you from Roswell, Georgia. The goal of this podcast is to share guests and topics that will empower you to grow as a confident leader and take your business or your life to the next level. I'm very pleased to welcome Ben Albert. Let me tell you a little bit about Ben. Ben is the owner of Albert Marketing LLC. Very clever there. He is also the curator of the reason of the Real Business Connections Network, where he hosts five, yes, five podcasts, the Rochester Business Connection, Learn, Speak, Teach, Ben Bites, Five Minute Fridays, and Real Hits. Once an underdog, now a successful entrepreneur, Ben's passionate about helping others other underdogs achieve their dreams. The theme of my podcast is just simply that, podcast hosting and guesting. He seems to be an expert, so I'm really excited to hear all of the advice he has to give to you and me as podcast host and future guest. So please join me in welcoming Ben Albert. Hey, Ben. Hey, Vicki. I'm excited to be here. I love your podcast, and we're going to have a fun time today. Yes. So we always start out with the easy thing. So I would love for you to share where you live. Where Where do you call home? Yeah, um, Rochester, New York. Ah, that's the Rochester Business Connection. I should have put two and two. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The Rochester, I've been there a few times. Very cool. I had some family that lived up near the Kodak plant. Yeah. I don't think it's there anymore, but um I believe it is. Um, but Kodak and both Xerox definitely have seen better days. Those are two <laughs> Rochester staples that it's hard to it's hard to come near Rochester without seeing mm. or hearing about Kodak and Xerox. Yeah. So I would love for you to share, uh, your bio is very brief, so I thought it would be great if you could just share a little bit about you and um, your story. Yeah, um, I will try not to give you my life story. I'll try (laughs) to give you just the most important parts. Okay. Um, But the fact I'm a podcaster blows my mind. I still get the nerves, like I was having (laughs) tech issues before we jumped on today, and I still get the nerves because... I was a quiet kid. I barely spoke a word the first 13 years of my life. I was raised Jewish. So the first time I did any public speaking was my bar mitzvah. (laughs) And my voice is just crackling all over the place. And I'm sweating and nervous. And, oh, man, it was just, it was a mess. Um, And it blows my mind that that I have a podcast now. But it was later in life that I started to really find my voice and my place Um, And at that time around high school was in the Mm. music industry. So I fell in love with music before then I was, I was in love with sports. I had a Jersey, a basketball Jersey (laughs) for every day of the week. (laughs) And I found later through character trait tests that I rank highest in appreciation for beauty and excellence. So it didn't matter if it was sports or music, I see a great thing and I just am all about it. So I was a quiet kid, but when I found the music industry, I started to feel a little bit more comfortable with myself. Mm -hmm. It was other creative types, some introverted types, and I played guitar, drums, these things. I wasn't the best musician, though. Where Ben's sweet spot was, was actually amplifying, quite literally, because they're amplifying, you know, amps and stuff, but 
amplifying great musicians. So mm. I was the one setting up social media pages when social media came out. I was the one handing out flyers, nice. selling band shirts. I couldn't stop talking about music. And once the quiet kid actually was, you know, one of the loudest kids in the room, <laughs> once he was aligned with something he was passionate about. So nice. I didn't realize that today I'd have all these podcasts or a marketing company, but it really is like meant to be that mm. it worked out the way it did. Cause still to this day, that's exactly what I get to do. Vicky, yeah. I get to amplify incredible people. I get to take a good thing and inject steroids into it. I'm the biggest advocate and supporter. And I still sometimes struggle talking about myself because honestly, my biggest gift is being the supporter, being the advocate, being the marketer, being the one handing out flyers. And that's what I get to do as a podcast host and a marketer. So I'm really happy with life now and excited to be here with you and excited to see where life goes for the future. Awesome. It's so interesting how so many of us are introverts mm. and yet are so comfortable in this podcasting environment. It's, I always thought that as I watched, okay, I'll date myself, Mike Douglas and Phil Donahue and Oprah, when she just started, how cool would that would be to just find out about people? I love finding out about people. And this is a great way to do that. So let's continue to find out about Ben. So I mentioned five podcasts, not one, not two, but five podcasts. How did you come about? What was the evolution of five podcasts? You know, I'm sure it wasn't all in the first year, hopefully. Not. So tell, talk to us about that. How do you go from one podcast to two and how do you manage five? Yeah, well, first off, sometimes I feel like I have shiny, shiny objects. In there, <laughs> so I love starting new things. I love building brands. Yeah. I love creating new, you know, just new and different things. Mm -hmm. um, and to give you the evolution in the simplest form possible, I started Rochester Business Connections. That was like my big, you know, starting show. I actually got furloughed from the co corporate world. Um, in April, late March, April, mm. when COVID hit. Oh, so wow. I go from really struggling and honestly in a really bad place. And my dad was an alcoholic. He actually basically drunk himself to death. And I found myself re kind of reciprocating some of those things that I saw him do when I was a wow. child. And I started a binge drinking and I was in a really, really bad place. And I was applying for jobs. I quite literally got on LinkedIn to redo my profile <laughs> that I hadn't touched in over 10 years. Yeah. And nothing was landing at the time. Mm -hmm. No one was hiring, not the right salary, this and that. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of leaned into something I already knew. Uh, I had on and off hosted a music podcast since 2016. So I had already been listening and hosting podcasts for over, you know, at that time, almost five years. Mm -hmm. um, and I loved marketing. So I worked marketing in corporate. I loved the concept of entrepreneurship, but I was never an entrepreneur. I had never imagined that I'd be a business owner mm -hmm. when I was younger. And I loved podcasting. So I stacked those three concepts together to start Rochester Business Connections, mm -hmm. which again, I'm born and raised in Rochester, New York. I love the city. Um, and I knew that I'd have, I'd have a better opportunity to build yeah. something locally than if I were to try to compete with the Oprah's of the world or <laughs> the Larry Kings and the Ed Milets and all these big names. Mm -hmm. So in November of that same year, 2020, I launched Rochester Business Connections Again, super hyper local. And every other show, I kind of just added on slowly, but mm. it's all an extension from the same concept. Mm -hmm. So it was all about connecting with, you know, the very best, most influential business people I could find, being nice. the dumbest person in the room, <laughs> at the very least being the most curious person in the room, mm -hmm. asking questions and doing what I love, elevating these people. Yeah. So once I built the Rochester show, you get slightly, I, I'll even be honest, you get a little hungry with power and you want to do more <laughs> and you want to expand. So eventually I rebranded 
from Rochester business connections to real business connections. Mm. So now real business connections is the network. Imagine ABC, NBC, or any radio station, right. real business connections is the network, but now there's five segments all based around the same things that started Rochester mm. business connections, great business leaders, love of learning, personal development. And really it just depends. Like I don't need to go through every little detail, <laughs> but in short, learn, speak, teach is my national and international mentor show. Then Rochester Business Connections is all hyper local. Mm -hmm. um, Ben's Bites is when it's just me. So it's if I want to come and do a monologue. Oh. Five Minute Fridays is sometimes me, but then sometimes professional contributors where we actually have a blog. But instead of just releasing a blog, we release audio of the blog post as well. Oh, okay. Well, those are very easy to implement business tips for people that are already bored with this conversation. They can get <laughs> the best stuff in five to 10 minutes. Lastly, Real Hits is mm -hmm. actually where I rebroadcast other podcasts. So oh. I realize that I'm only one voice with a certain level of intelligence and opinions, and I bring on great guests. But Real Hits is where I actually rebroadcast other podcasters, other guests, so we can bring other worldly viewpoints to my station. So the listeners, if they get sick of me, they can actually just listen to the real. It's kind of like my recommended greatest hist of other, other That's podcasts. That's so cool. That's really cool. I love it. So I would love to talk networking. Cool. You know, both of us like to elevate people and to really have a, a platform for them to shine. So what are some tips that you can share with our audience today on how you network and, and what has worked? Yeah, so it always starts with what's in it for them. Mm -hmm. um, if you get really strategic, you start to realize that if you help a ton of people, it actually does come back to you. Mm -hmm but it always begins with what's in it for them. Now imagine if you go and you help five people and only one person helps you. Okay, I got help by one person. Even worse, maybe you help zero people and one person helps you. Now, the way I see it is if I help 100 people and 20 people help me, I'm still winning like crazy because mm -hmm. I got to help a hundred people. I got to create a ripple where they can go help other people, whether or not it comes back around. But regardless, by helping a hundred, I got helped by 20 rather than three, two, one, or no one at all. So mm -hmm. I always think what's in it for them and how can I serve them? Um, so that's how I go into every interaction. If I don't over deliver, I actually sometimes feel icky like I want to be over delivering for people. Mm -hmm. um, so the podcast you're doing right now is a great example. You can add value without taking or having too like difficult of an ask. It's, hey, Ben, I want to highlight you. Mm -hmm. I love what you're up to. I think your audience can gain, you know, insight. My audience can gain insight from what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Or another way is let's say you have a blog, you can bring contributors you can bring contributors in. So mm -hmm. I call it the CAN system. It's very simple. Create, connect, collaborate, and network. Um, what I call is creation-driven networking. Nice. So creation is the purpose of my networking. I want to create, connect, and network. So mm -hmm. if I go to a networking event, if I jump on a discovery call, if I'm having any conversation, my question to myself is how can we collaborate together? Yeah. And then it's not, hey, I want referrals. Hey, what's in it for me? It's how can I create mutually beneficial content for them? What's in it for them? How can they be like so happy that they took this meeting? How can I over deliver for them? And then through, you know, just the mutual connection you create, you get to share audiences, you get to share networks. One thing I love to do is make nominations for podcasts, give introductions. Yeah. But at the core, I said it like five times, I feel like it's how can I serve them? What's in mm -hmm. it for them? And even better, is there a strategic way we can work together 
so I can benefit by helping them because ultimately we get to benefit together. Yeah. And that's so true because when you meet people, they're oftentimes, you know, you may not have what they need, but the network that we have, I love to say, well, you know, I know this person, I know, you know, Joe, he can help you with this. Or now I know Ben and he has all these podcasts. You would be an awesome guest on, you know, so I, I think the collaboration and the joint venture piece of, of what we do is just so satisfying as an entrepreneur. It's amazing. I, I'll give you a tiny example. Mm -hmm. So my podcast is overbooked. I'm kind of overwhelmed. I'm like, I want to do less episodes, but I have <laughs> a lot of inquiries. However, I have an incredible community of podcasters in my network. So even if someone isn't a good fit for my show or vice mm -hmm. versa, I have the ability to be a bridge and make an introduction to yeah. a better fit. So I'm not always going to be a good fit and neither is the person I'm speaking with, but if we can create bridges for connection, mm. it's worth the conversation every single time. Yeah, for sure. I love the title of your podcast, Ben Bites. And you did explain a little bit about what it is, but what, how did that name come about? You know, how did, was it just like over a, a drink at, at the bar and you thought, yeah, I just, how'd, how'd you get that name? That's a great question. I don't think I have an answer for you. <laughs> I'm going to think about this. The easiest answer I have is I like alliteration. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of alliteration for obvious reasons, just the ring of something like Ben's Bites. Mm -hmm. and, the and the concept is, um, it's just a little nibble. It's an hors d'oeuvre. Yeah, awesome. it's, it's an hors d'oeuvre. It's a little yeah. bite. Um, and I, Ben's Bites is where I quite literally talk about whatever I want for however long I want. So it might just be a three minute long episode, mm -hmm. but it's up to me. It's my, it's my menu. It's my hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> So that's why it's called Ben's Bites. But I actually don't remember where I actually thought of the name itself, other than it just okay. came to me one day. It's perfect. And and it's really, it describes exactly what it is. <clears throat> yeah. And what to expect. Little nibbles. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. awesome. So what makes a great guest on one of your podcasts? Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about what makes a great guest, and then we can talk about what just makes a great collaborator or person to be oh, part yeah. of your network. So what makes a great guest, I kind of already alluded to it. Mm -hmm. Someone who's ready and willing to over deliver. You and I have both committed, you know, 30 minutes or so of our time to be present with one another. Mm -hmm. It really frustrates me when people are picking up their phones or they seem <laughs> detached or um, they don't seem agreeable. Like, for me, it's just someone that's willing to be there in the present, in their truth. I am always on my guest side, so I'm never going to put you on the spot to make you feel bad. And I'm not a pro at this. I do my best. I can kind of tell in body language if yeah. they don't like the way the conversation's going. Mm -hmm. I'm their biggest cheerleader. So mm -hmm. I'm on your side. If you come and over deliver, that's the best you can do. And based on your life experience, that's going to be in a different category based mm -hmm. on your gifts. But utilizing your gifts, showing up in the present, and doing whatever you can. And I actually forgot to ask you in the the, the intro um, who exactly your audience is. And I apologize for not asking <laughs> because part of being a good guest is not talking about Ben or you know, not even talking about like Vicky. And it's it's about – bringing value for the right. audience right. is the absolute key. Um, the second part, which is less necessary because if they do all of that, I'm happy. And I almost always learn 10 things I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. The second part is sharing the episode, following yeah. up with the conversation and actually serving as a member of the host network. Yeah. You know this cause you're a podcast host. Hosts are very well connected. 
they have a lot of great conversations with brilliant people mm -hmm. and they're the exact kind of person that i want to build a friendship with we have so much in common right so not sharing not saying thank you if you really want to go above and beyond sending the host a gift mm -hmm. realizing that you spent 45 minutes with them but they spent time setting up the podcast editing the podcast creating content sometimes show notes tagging you following up via email you, it's almost impossible to meet them halfway mm. but do your best to meet them over deliver in the promotion and the connection for example if you have any asks we're going to do it offline I'm an open book to give you introductions because I want to bring value the same. Yeah. I want us to be aligned here. So most important thing is to freaking over deliver for the audience. Yeah. But I think you're doing yourself a disservice and the host a disservice if you don't have that same mentality to over deliver for them as well. That's awesome. See, that's why you're such a great person. <laughs> I, knew, <laughs> I knew this was going to be an awesome interview. I hope someone's listening and they don't do this yeah. and it's like a light bulb moment yeah. that I'm actually missing out on relationship opportunities by not showing up for the person. Absolutely. We, we need Absolutely. To show up. And what I found too, and the thing that got me into podcasting was that this COVID world that we were living in, I just felt such a, a lack of relationships and it just, this just opened up and that's why I'd like to be so open in this environment is because to me, it's just as nice as sitting across the dinner table with you. And, you know, I'm trying to make it that way. Yeah. So what is the biggest challenge? I just mentioned COVID a minute ago, but in, in these last two years, now you started your business in the heat of COVID, but what was the biggest challenge and really what worked out to be the biggest opportunity? Yeah. So I love that you asked the question like this, because when I see challenges, I'm very open and mm -hmm. willing to be like, I screwed up here. I struggle <laughs> with this, but I see the challenge and I see the problems as opportunities. My biggest struggle, like the number one biggest struggle is I was an ex a sales executive, a sales rep for a marketing firm. Mm -hmm. I lived in breathe and marketing. I didn't just show up like I was listening to podcasts, yeah. reading all of it on the side. However, I was a sales rep. I wasn't business development. I wasn't accounting. <laughs> I wasn't leadership. I wasn't fulfillment. I actually didn't mm -hmm. fulfill the orders. I did more of the consulting end of things. Yeah. So suddenly I went from wearing one hat, <laughs> one piece of the pie to being the whole pie. And I feel like one pie wasn't enough. Like there was more <laughs> pies than I even expected. And all I was, was a tiny little slice. Um, and, I do, and I have no accounting background. I'm not an MBA. I mm -hmm. didn't go to school for business management. So without getting in the weeds, every single day I'd run into a new issue of some sort. <sighs> How do I do a contract? Is there a way to auto sign contracts? How do I bring in payments? How do I track the payments? How do I make sure once I'm, I, I didn't realize I had to pay so much in fees for credit card <laughs> fees and I wasn't charging enough. And then all my money was going to the credit card company. Yeah. So it was really a major opportunity to learn every aspect of business mm. where I love entrepreneurship, but even if I were to leave this role and mm. go back to corporate or another role, now I understand the process holistically a lot better. And as a marketing company, Vicki, it's my job to help the business owner. Yeah. And now I actually understand what they go through. So it's so a you, massive level of empathy there. That I was I just going to say, have. Yeah, yeah, you can be, definitely say that you've walked in their shoes and, um, and that helps you to be able to foresee some of the challenges that they might not even know that mm. that's coming their way. That's true. So time is flying by. <laughs> We're on our last full question before we get to rapid fire. Cool. This is when I ask oftentimes, what would you, ad advice would you give to your 20 year old self? 
So I love this question. I've asked this question and I haven't even quite <laughs> figured out what you answer. <laughs> well, here's the thing. The cliche answer is I wouldn't have changed a thing. I, I feel like it's a cliche answer because I truly don't know. My 20 year old self was drinking too much, was smoking weed, was going for relationships that didn't fulfill me. Um, was following other people's purpose, you know, yeah. like what car, what job, mm -hmm. what school, yeah. all the things you should do. And be honest, I don't even know if I knew who I was. Wow. But if I were to go back, my 20 year old self wouldn't have listened. <laughs> so true. <laughs> So I feel like if I went back to my 20 year old self and I'm going to have to sit on this question a little bit, um, I'd probably want to give them a book or two or a podcast. <laughs> I'd probably want to like be that bridge and be like, Hey, I recommend this, but I don't think I could have been preachy because my 20 year old <laughs> self was too caught up in all of the college, like short term materialistic necessities that he would have thought my, you know, <laughs> I'm in my thirties right now. He would have thought the 30 something year old self was weird and lame. <laughs> That's a great question though. I'm going to, I'm going to lose a little bit of sleep over yeah. that. You know, but the, if, if you think about it, that was a great answer because what you learned is that you aren't going to try to preach to your 20 year old self. You're going to let them self discover from just what you offer out there. This like, plate of of things to to uncover and discover yourself so that was a great answer all right rapid fire <clears throat> and these are just taken from some of your background information that i found but hmm. one of the areas that that you talk about and an area that i know is very important is linkedin talk to the audience about the power of linkedin yeah, I mean, there's nowhere else in the world that I have found that there's so many strangers that like business development and networking that you've never met yet mm -hmm. that aren't going to get creeped out that you sent them a connection request. Almost everyone I've met has been seated through interactions on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. All my initial podcast guests, uh, I don't want to go too long-winded and rapid fire, I was reaching out to SUNY Brockport alumni. SUNY Brockport is a suburb of Rochester. I'm mm -hmm. a SUNY Brockport alumni myself. So I targeted SUNY Brockport alumni, connected with alumni, and built my network bigger from there. Nice. These strangers wouldn't have added me on Facebook. Yeah. LinkedIn's powerful. Mm-hmm. And and I like to the the mindset piece. You know, you can really filter the people that have that same mindset as you. Absolutely. Which leads me to the next rapid fire question: finding the right people. So you have a business, and at some point you may need to staff that business. You may be already there. How do you find the people that are the right fit for you? It's a great question. I haven't staffed yet, so I'm not going to position myself as an authority in this. I try to live my life in alignment with my values. Um, a few of the main ones are just growth oriented people, like always looking to level up mm. people that believe in connection, sense of belonging, yeah. community and fun. Yeah. So all the content, everything I do from the podcast to my LinkedIn content to my conversations are all about growth, connection, and fun. So the best advice from someone who hasn't done it before, so take it with a grain of salt, but I will tell you this, I create all my marketing content around those three values. Mm. So I would try to attract culture fits, and it doesn't matter to me quite as much experience or gender or race or sexual orientation. If they're a culture fit with your value system, mm. there's a high probability if they have the skill set or the trainability, they'll fit good with your company. Very good advice. Coming from someone who's never done it. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, that's a thing. I think a lot of people second guess, but you, you know, you put yourself 
in uh, what would you have wanted for you? You know, mm. you know, you have to work with that person. So, and the answer for that is that's how I find clients as well. Mm -hmm. I look yeah. for clients that are a culture fit for me. So if that's how I find clients, I presume that's a great way to find partners and employees as well. Yep, absolutely. So you have five podcasts. You're, you have a marketing business. How do you stay focused? Ooh, how do I stay focused? <laughs> I'm not the most focused person. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. So I work longer hours than I ever used to, but I get to learn, work those hours a bit more on my terms. Mm -hmm. So the podcast is just a labor of love. It's leisure. Yeah. It's fun. Um, I don't always stay focused, but I will tell you this. I keep a very strict calendar. So if it's in the calendar, I do it and I'm 100% present when there's gaps in the calendar, I might go on a walk. I might go take the dogs out. I don't really care, but my best focus is keeping a strict calendar and showing up for everything that I agreed to show up for. Very good. So how are you helping the underdogs today? I, I know you've talked about this really throughout, but you know, give us a, a, a couple other things that you do to help we underdogs. Yeah, yeah. So giving them permission to be human, giving them permission to share their truth. Um, we didn't go the deep, dark route today. I'm kind of good that we didn't. Um, but I've struggled with alcoholism, being gaslighted when I was a kid. I struggled with failure. It wasn't until I hit like my upper 20s that I actually started doing something that I felt was at all aligned with purpose, like of what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and by telling my story, and giving other people the outlet to tell their story, it gives people permission to be okay with their own story. And in addition to that, I don't really like working with big, snotty corporate businesses. <laughs> I like working with small to medium-sized businesses with a massive amount of growth potential and allow them to actually surpass their bigger, snotty competitors. So nice. it's in a business sense in the marketing and then the podcast is really just a platform for people to realize that we're all just freaking human. Mm -hmm. We all struggle, but by bringing the successes that came after these struggles, we can all learn how to be better ourselves. And I think one of the great lessons is that you tell people by telling your stories is that it's okay to fail. You just have to get up and keep going. And that's what you did. Mm-hmm. So what are you most grateful for? Most grateful for? I'm going to spin this on its head. I'm most grateful for my gratitude journal because I make a list of things I'm grateful for every single day. And yeah. I'm grateful for that practice because my family comes up a lot. My, my dogs come up a lot. <laughs> Conversations like this come up all the time. Um, I'm really just grateful that life is such a gift. The fact that I exist, I think is a far lower probability than getting struck by lightning. <laughs> the fact that whatever you want to call it, but we'll call it God chose me out of all the possible <laughs> sperm that could become mm. a human. Like just the fact I woke up this morning is a reason to be grateful. Mm. And that gratitude journal has thousands of reasons over time. I think, you know, it's a wonderful way to just keep on reminding yourself. And, and you, even on your darkest days, just looking at those, those things, reminding yourself just makes the day brighter. So. I've got an AC over here. A lot of people don't have that luxury. And I'm over um, here complaining about l losing sleep. <laughs> A lot of people don't have the luxury of having shelter. Yeah, so that's right. I'd be crazy not to be tremendously grateful for the opportunities I have. Well, our time has come where I warn everyone who is just listening to this to grab a pencil and paper. I'm going to share my screen and I will read for you the website so that we can have you be able to contact Ben. So 
His website is realbusinessconnections.com. And you can reach him at Ben at Bal Balbert Marketing. Another right. play on words, Balbert Marketing. He's on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can search um, by Balbert or the Real Business Connection, um, as well as the Real Ben Albert. So please go to realbusinessconnections.com, check out his website, and that's Get. the easiest way too, Vicky. So if they mm -hmm. start at realbusinessconnections.com, there will actually be a tab for Balbert Marketing, um, et cetera, et cetera. But since Real Business Connections is easy to spell, yes, I think that's the easiest route, just realbusinessconnections.com. And you have the links to all that social media on your site anyway, so that's yes. perfect. Yeah. So it has been wonderful having this conversation with you. It's uh, a, a great person to talk to about just podcasting. And um, we're so like-minded in what we do, helping others. And uh, it's something that you should be very proud of what you're doing for the, the world and the community. And uh, so I would encourage everyone to please go to his website, check it out, ask questions, and um, connect with Ben. I don't bite. I If someone messages <laughs> me and says they know Vicky, they're going to go to the top of my list of highest priorities. Um, Absolutely. And thanks for sharing your heartbeats with me, Vicky. It's been a good yeah. time. It has been so wonderful. And uh, I look to connect with you some more as we go on. And uh, I'll pass on some opportunities that I have so that we can support each other as we go forward. So wonderful meeting you and looking forward to future uh, endeavors together. So as always, I end with a life is a journey and it's up to you to enjoy the ride. This is Vicki Nettling signing off. Thank you for tuning into the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nettling, where we share impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Remember to visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast.